Welcome back to another AutoCAD tutorial here. Um, today what we're going to be talking about uh, options and what options are and some of the important things under options and uh, what we can do under there to kind of make our lives a little bit easier. Um, so this will kind of be a boring video if you ask me, but uh, um, some people have been asking for it. So here's you go. So there's a few different ways to get to options. You can either right click in model space and go to options. Or if you're like to type all your commands in, you can test it OP and hit enter and you'll get right to where you need to go. Um, it really depends on kind of what you're looking for. Um, by default, you're going to start off at files here. So once you're at files at the top here, um, you'll see something called supported file search path. Now this is going to be different depending on what you're using. I have Civil 3D installed, so you'll notice some Civil 3D extensions in here. Um, but pretty much this is where you're going to grab all your search paths from. So if you're a company or a person who uses custom line types or uh, custom shape files, custom fonts, you're going to want to make sure you path those here so that you can pull them up. So for me, for instance, you know, I would click add and I click browse and I would go find some custom files. Now I don't use any custom files for the most part. All the stuff I use is pretty well already in there. Um, I try not to stray from too much stuff. Um, but let me find some CAD standards here and I'll be back with you in a second. So all right, I'm back. Um, if you notice, here's my company's CAD standards here. And uh, looking at it here, you'll notice we have blocks, details. Um, so I know all my, uh, my shape files and my font files are right under here under this AIMCAD folder. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now notice it kind of puts it in the bottom here. Now AutoCAD loads these things as in sort of a priority order if I'm not mistaken anymore. Um, so I really want to move this guy to the top so that when it loads, it'll load mine first. So this is where any custom fonts, custom shape files, custom line type files, anything like that, this will need to be passed for in the support file search path. The next most common kind of change path in here, and I'm going to ignore some here, um, is the trusted file locations here. If you're a company who uses any custom made commands, um, custom uh, VB files and stuff of that sort, you may need to add your path here to here. So mine, again, that path would be the same as what I added right here. So I would add that same path in here. So this way when AutoCAD boots up, it's not gonna warn me and say there's an untrusted app, do I want to load it? And odds are your answer is gonna be yes, but um, for the most part, you know, watch what you're loading because sometimes it could be mischievous. So um, going back to the next most important thing in here is in customization files. This is where your main CUI for, in this case, AutoCAD is at. Um, so this is what controls your ribbons and your panels, um, what happens when you double click and all that fun jazz. Your custom user interface has a lot to do with the way your AutoCAD looks. So, um, and actually works for the most part in a lot of these ribbons and tabs. So. Um, making sure that this is set to the default location is great, but if you ever customize uh, one thing here, what I like to do is I go to this path, I copy and paste it out, and I put it on my own user drive, and I customize it from there. Um, and this will give me the ability to, first of all, go back to the original if I ever want to, and B, I can do whatever I want to this one. It'll be my own installation, sort of, in a way. It'll look like mine. Now, again, um, I teach a lot of classes, so I've kind of gotten away from fully customizing a lot of my stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, back in the day, I used to really modify things a lot, and this is, that's exactly what I would do. Um, coming further down the list here, the second kind of or third most important area right here is this printer support file path. Now, under here, you're really not going to mess with the spooler location, but these next three here can be quite important. First of all, this one points to the folder where any PC3 files might be held. Now, if you're printing using uh, Windows printers, that's fine. Uh, but you can create PC3 files so that all the settings for vellum, all the settings for bond, all the settings for mylar and such are already stored in there. So pretty much you just go to your PC3 file and you click print bond, print vellum, print mylar, whatever you want to do. Um, most people don't use them anymore, but PC3 files used to be very popular, and this is where it's pointing to. So this would not be where mine are at, so I would have to point this again to my Dropbox location where I have all my CAD standards. Um, hopefully there's a folder called Plotters, 
and there's a folder called PMP files, and there's a folder called plot styles. Now, regardless if you use these two here, you're probably at least using this one at a company, um, and this is where your plot styles are going to go. Um, so whenever you uh, print something, you know, what tells red with thickness and screening and all that other stuff, this is where your CTB files or your STB files are held. And in later videos, we'll get into creating our own customization files for colors and printing and stuff like that, our own plot styles, if you will. Um, but for right now, this is what points to those. Um, <clears throat> this one here is probably one of the more important ones, and you'll probably use it no matter whether you customize this or not. Um, this is the automatic save file location. So this is really important because you need to know where your uh, save files are when you crash or something like that. Well, mine are held under user B black app data local slash temp. So if you wanted to shorten this up, you could. You can place it wherever you want. Sometimes I do change this to C temp. Um, the other one and the uh, last one I'm going to go over in here in detail is going to be template settings here. Um, so this controls when you go to file new, first of all, where the templates are located so you don't get the default AutoCAD ones. Um, for instance, drawing template file location, here's where AutoCAD's default is, but that not, might not be where my default is. So I might want to change this here to my own. And then I would browse the Dropbox and I would change this so I load only my own templates. Same thing here goes for Sheet Set Manager examples or stuff of that nature. Um, we'll get into that in other videos as well. Um, default template for QNew. So when you go to, when you just type in QNew or you hit that new button up here, if you ever notice, it just kind of opens up a quick drawing. Well, which template is that drawing using? Well, this sets that drawing. So right now it's using none, so it's just a default. So if I wanted to use my template, obviously not one of these because these are the defaults, I would select my template there. So that way when I just go to File New, or I should say this button really here too, it'll just use my new template. And then for Sheet Set Manager and Page Setup Overrides, um, we'll get to this a little bit later, but it has a lot to do when using sheet sets, how you can automatically have different printers set up so you can override the print settings. Um, and that's really the most important things under there. Um, also looking at display here, um, I'm not going to go over everything here, but if you notice, I have certain things turned off and on down here. Um, and that means when I go to my layout space here, if you look, my layout space continues to be all black. Now, if I had something like this on, if you notice, it changes in the background. I don't like that, so I turn that off. So if I do like to have the display printable area on, which is this here. Also, if these disappear here, um, you can also turn them on and off right here. Um, also, this here, the higher the number, the kind of the hopefully the better computer you have, as this will control whether you have those circles that look like multi-sided hexagons or whatever, whatever agons, whatever they may be. Um, when your circles don't look like circles anymore, this is the culprit here. Um, now, if that annoys you, I just suggest typing a regen other than upping the number here. Um, also, your crosshair size, depending on how you like the draft, can vary. Um, this one's set to five right now, and you can set it anywhere up to 100 and get the super crosshairs if you want to go all the way across. There are people who argue pro and con versus both of them. I tend not to join that crowd. Um, also in here is your XREF fade controls. So if you don't like your X references kind of looking half shaded or a little bit dull looking, switch this to zero. Um, that way you kind of look at your X references just like it was in your drawing. Um, I'm not going to go over everything in here, but the most important thing in this tab here is your automatic save. Mine is happening every 10 minutes. Sometimes that gets annoying. I switch it to 30. I know other people who use 60, but again, the higher the number, the more risk you run if your drawing crashes and how much work you're going to lose. So right now at the most, I'll lose 30 minutes of work, but if I had it set to 60 minutes, I could possibly lose one hour worth of work, which might be considered bad. Um, also, under Plot and Publish, most important thing here is which printers are you using by default. Um, I'm on my home PC right now, so it's just using my plain Windows printer right here in my office. Um, I'm going to skip system altogether here and go right to user preferences. Um, user preferences right here, I like to turn right click customization on. And what that does is when I quickly tap right click, it'll do an enter. If I click and hold, it pulls up the menu or a shortcut menu, I should say. Um, so it's just something I like to do. Um, it has a lot to do with the control of my mouse 
and that's right here. Uh, and again, you, that's something you have to experiment with and get better at if you're looking to use it. Uh, I'm going to skip these here and go over to selection. Um, this pick box size is that little box in the center of my cursor here. Um, the bigger I make it, the more things I can select at once. The bigger you make it, the more things you do select, though. Um, I always tell people not everybody's got the same vision. Um, up it a little bit, you know, if you're having trouble clicking on something or getting close enough. Um, I really just suggest zooming in a bit more, um, but you can change the size of it in the middle. And of course, those blue grips, you can change the size of those as well. <clears throat> now, going over to profiles here, if you notice, again, if yours doesn't look like mine, don't worry about it. It's just because I'm also running Civil 3D here and not just plain vanilla AutoCAD. Um, but notice I have several different profiles here saved. Um, and these are what controls all these settings in here. So once I'm satisfied and I have modified these things the way I want them to, another good kind of practice is to export it out and save it somewhere. Of course, in a network location is best. And that way, whenever you want to repath all your network drives, you can just load it back in here again and save yourself some time. Um, also note, when I reload it back in here and I import, I usually erase this one out and name it the same. And this way it'll just take over for the AutoCAD default profile. Personally, this is what I like to do. Now, also you can set a target if you're really Windows crafty, you can target your ARG file when AutoCAD is opening. So it opens your ARG and not this one. Um, but I find it easier just to kind of repath this one. And of course, I can always save a copy of this in case I wanna go back to defaults. So again, this is the video on our options thing, the most important things you need to know in there, absolutely gotta know. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the video even more and you wanna see more, please click subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next CAD video. Thank you.